Okay, so there's a couple of ways we can do this problem. Uh, we can certainly do this by hand and, and using, using formulas, and I'll show you that first. So as you've seen in the book when you read it, the way you get the margin of error, and we know this deals with proportions because we're dealing with p hats. We're trying to estimate the population proportion. Um, the full confidence interval formula is that your sample, your point estimate, your results from your sample, times however many standard deviations you want to be uh, away from the mean, plus or minus, and that's, that's that critical value of z. Um, and then we're going to do p hat, because we don't know the population proportion, times 1 minus p hat over the sample size. And of course, we take the square root of that mess. So this plus or minus part, that's the margin of error. And that's what they're asking us to find for this problem. So um, if you look in that little mini table I uploaded for you, there's a, the 95% comfortable. This is a z-score, so we're going to use that. 1.96, almost two standard deviations, times, let's see, p hat's 0.35, so 0.35, and then 1 minus 0.35 is 0.65. All over the size of your sample, which is, uh, what is it, 600? And then if I crunch out on my calculator, Actually, I think I can show you that. Um, well, I'll just do it off screen. Let's see, 1.96 times the square root of 0.35 times 0.65 divided by 600. And I got 0 0.038, 0 0.03817. If I round, I don't know how many decimal places we got to make. It says three. I might try all those just to see if it likes it. Now, how can I do this with, without using the formula? Well, Rossman Chance does this for us. Here, let me uh, go back to a. Uh, let me uh, refresh this page here. Okay, so here is that Rossman Chance applet. I'm working with proportions. Uh, they told me I had a sample size of 600. I know the p hat's 0.35. So I'm going to let it calculate my sample, my count for me. And then I want to do a confidence interval. So I got to make sure to check confidence interval, put in your level of confidence, calculate your confidence interval. Now this is giving me my answer in, in, uh, in interval form. If I want to find the margin of error from this form, remember this is this, what this is, is this is the, 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 uh, well, if you go back to my work here over here, what do I have? So I'll have 0.35 plus or minus 0.03817. So this is the margin of error. And what they've done to get this is they've done 0.35 minus the 0 0.03817 and 0.35 plus the 0 0.03817. So this means that this is, uh, and if you think about that, what do they, she calls it, that trilinear form? Uh, 0.31, uh, I lost my, uh, I lost my drawing tool. 0.3118 is less than or equal to uh, p hat, which is less than or equal to 0.3882. This interval, is two of these margin of errors wide. Because remember, because I've gone, I've subtracted it and I've added it to get that. Let me get that spotlight tool going. So this is the uh, p hat minus the margin of error, and this is p hat plus the margin of error. So there's two margin of errors wide in here. So if I was just looking for the margin of error, and this is what they gave me, I'm going to subtract them. 
So 0.3882 minus 0.3118. And I'll get that's remember, that's my two margin of errors wide. I guess I can do that. Uh, let's see here. So 0.3882 minus 0.3118. When I did that on my calculator, I got 0 0.0764. And now I'm going to divide that by 2 to get the actual margin of error. And I'm getting the same answer I got here. And that works in my open math. So I hope that helps you solve this kind of question. Either way works for me. You don't have to do the algebra if you don't want to.